please men. I haven't used the speech of flattery and so on. Um, St. Paul has been a faithful apostle of God, teaching the truth of God to uh, the whole of the Mediterranean world, once setting up one church over another at this, in these early years of the Catholic Church. He is famous for various things. He was famous for having, Pius X is famous for having it, it, it tidied up, it, so to speak, the church's canon law, or having put into a code the, the canon law of the church, so that this code would be clear, clear and updated and one single reference instead of a number of different sources of canon law, but there would be this central code. He didn't live to finish it himself, but Benedict XVI, the Pope who followed him, uh, completed it. But that was the Pope work essentially of Pius, the Twer of Pius X. Uh, another great thing he did was to much encourage the devotion to and the practice of, of Holy Communion, the Holy Eucharist. Another thing that he did, and possibly his main claim to glory, not understood by everybody, but understood by those who understand their faith, was his defense of the faith against the appalling heresy of modernism. Appalling because it is not like any other heresy. Uh, here's, here's a clumsy comparison. Imagine the Titanic. Uh, you know that it sank because of one gash up front on the starboard side. It hit the iceberg up front on, on the iceberg ripped open the steel, um, the steel hull of the liner just enough to make sure that, that within a few hours the Titanic would sink. It was just, had it been a few more, it would have sank much faster. If it had been even just a little less, it wouldn't have sunk because the watertight compartments would have held, uh, stopped the water flooding right through the ship. But it was one compartment too many, so to speak, and therefore within about three hours the Titanic sank. The ship that the Belfast builders had boasted was unsinkable. Uh, uh, the, the world was on the, 1912 was on the brink of the First World War. The world needed a lesson, and the Titanic has been a huge lesson of the li limitedness of man and the power of God. Almighty God could easily have made the ship miss the, the, the iceberg, that he could have made the, 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 those who were on watch see it sooner, the ship would have got out of the way, but mankind needed teaching a lesson in 1912 of its relative inadequacy before the, the First World War would be a terrible lesson of the modern world being on the wrong track. The Second World War and now the Third World War because the mankind has not wanted to get off the wrong track. It still wants to, it still wants to get rid of God, therefore the Third World War must come in order to teach man a lesson, mankind a lesson. God is not mocked. The modern man thinks he is. The whole of mankind thinks he is. He's being mocked all over the world. All we need today is modern medicine, modern science, modern machines, modern computers. This is the good life. This is what guarantees us a good life. There's no problem. We are going to do better than God and we need to get rid of God so that he can leave us the place to show him how much better we are. Incredible, unbelievable folly. But modern man is as stupid as his feet. Actually, that's an insult to his feet. He's far more stupid. Uh, he's completely idiotic with this shutting out of God. And Almighty God is going to have to show within a sh with quite soon that he is the master and not poor little man. But there we are. And the modernism is the error of the church today. Back to the Titanic. Imagine now a, 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 glo a gnome or some evil little creature. I forget what they're called in the Lord of the Rings or elsewhere. But some evil little creature that has a magic potion which if he sprays on the inside of the, of the steel, it will make the steel porous so that the, the oil, the water will just come through. And if it goes around the inside, the inside the whole hull of the ship, from inside the ship, not something from outside like the iceberg, but from inside, if he goes around all the hull of the ship and, and sprays his magic potion, then the, the, the water will, will soak in 
from everywhere, quietly, uh, gently, but nevertheless easily enough in all compartments of the ship to sink it. And the Titanic would sink with this imaginary potion. Modernism is like this potion. Firstly, it comes not from outside the church, it comes from inside the church. Secondly, it's quite quiet. It's not one gash. It's not even a gash. It's just something that makes the steel no longer stop water. And it's, it's everywhere, it's all around the ship, and the ship sinks without realizing what's happening. It's un it's, uh, they send the, the engineers and the me mechanicians and the mechanics down below decks to see what's going on, and all he sees is the water oozing everywhere. He's got no means of stopping, the, the, the mechanics have got no means of stopping it since it's oozing everywhere. There's not just one place where he can try to patch it up or stop the water oozing through. It's oozing everywhere and the ship sinks. Uh, th th this magic potion uh, is, is in all men's minds today. It's in all of our minds. It's the conclusion of liberalism. It's the, it's the continuation of con con uh, and, and completion of, 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 of liberalism. Freedom. Liberalism is the exaggeration that is turning liberty into a god. Liberty for good, liberty for evil, in any case, liberty. Uh, that's liberalism, religion on its own, but modernism is even worse. Because modernism is the mind liberated from reality. The mind living in la la land. The mind deciding what is reality instead of reality telling the mind what it is. It's much, it's, it's an oozing of craziness into my poor brain. And it, it oozes into me from all sides. So then once it's inside my brain, I, I can't see reality any longer. And then, uh, without r r reality, I'm living in a dream. I'm living in, uh, I'm not, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm just going to get, if my mind is unhooked from reality, I can get absolutely everything wrong. I'm no longer even, I'm no longer a prisoner of two and two equals four. Uh, modernism liberates me from two and two equals four. And how often maybe have some of you tried arguing with modern people and you say, well, well, and you'll try to argue that there is a reality outside our minds which imposes itself on our minds, and they're saying, no, I am free from everything and everything. Um, well, what two and two are four? Do you admit that that's a reality outside your mind? No, 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 two and four is just your opinion. And it doesn't matter how many people's opinion it is, my opinion is that two and two is four, or five, or six. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's my choice. And it's much more free. I'm no longer imprisoned by two and two being only four. I am liberated from reality. I am, it's much more creative. It's much more lovely. It's much more nice. It's much more like chocolate inside me. I control reality. I make reality. Reality is what I make. It's not what is, but what I make. That's modernism. It's an incredible stupidity, it's sheer craziness, but what's behind it is precisely the revolt of man against God's reality. And in the case of modernism, against God's church, the reality of God's church, especially God's doctrine. So while the gash can be compared to one heresy, and you may know that one heresy, if I, if I hold on, I may, there may be 12 articles of the creed, I hold, on to, I hold on to 11 of them, there's just only one that I let go, but you may know, if you know your catechism, you know that you have lost the faith because you are deciding what the faith is. You're deciding 11 articles are true, one article is false. But modernism isn't, isn't even like that. Modernism is, is the oozing through the steel. So there's no, in fact, there's no more steel to hold out the water. There's no more clarity of mind what is real to shut out the fantasies and stupidities and la-la land. And that's how the state in which many people's brains are today. They don't no longer, they no, they're losing their grip on objective reality. There isn't any longer an objective truth which imposes itself upon me because that would be a limitation of my liberty. 
I will be less free. So the ultimate of liberalism is freedom from freedom of form my mind from reality. This began 400 years at the end of the 16th, in the uh, 17th century, with a French philosopher called Descartes, who was simply picking up the vibes from the world around him. By the 17th century, the world was definitely slipping away from God. Later in the 17th and later in the 17th century. Almighty God would, would give to mankind the devotion to the Sacred Heart because he knew that the world was growing cold, that this philosopher Descartes was introducing a new philosophy, a new understanding of reality. I think, therefore I am, mainly putting idea, my ideas in front of reality. I think my ideas, therefore I am existence and reality. Uh, folly. Uh, there's a sense in which that is true. If, if here I am thinking, then there must be somebody that is thinking, uh, and that somebody must exist, otherwise he couldn't be thinking. So there's a truth, there's a tr but it's, it's, it's thoroughly ambiguous. The Lord God does not like ambiguity, what we call a double tongue, what George Orwell calls double think. Thinking contradictors at the same time, holding contradictions at the same time. The objective truth shuts out contradiction. It, there, there can't be one truth, objective truth, contradicting another objective truth. It's not possible. Truth must all synchronize with all other truth. Whatever truth is true must be in sync with whatever else is true. But the modern mind is, is there's no such thing any longer as a truth which ex excludes error. The exclusion of error. No, no, no. We don't want to exclude error. We want everybody inside. They all got different opinions. They all contradict one another. The church is so big, it's so inclusive. The church has got to be inclusive and no longer exclusive. Well, <laughs> that way souls exclude themselves from the truth and exclude themselves from the truth. They put themselves more or less straight on the path to hell. There is a hell. There is a heaven. And the laws of, 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 uh, for getting to, getting to heaven and avoiding hell are from God. They are laid down by him. They are objective. They are what the Czech Church has always taught without changing because the truth, these truths don't change. Our Lord can't have ascended one year and then they say that he didn't ascend the next year. These are contradictories. One, one all is true. One of them is false, or both of them are false. But it's impossible that he did ascend and he didn't ascend, for instance. Therefore, the problem is men's minds and the whole drift of the modern world, ever since Descartes, who was the first half of the 17th century, go working through, completed by Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher towards the end of the 18th century, and there were some stupid Brits in between who, who who uh, three, three, at least three, Barclay, uh, Locke, Barclay, Hume, uh, who were in the same class of idiocy. Uh, modern man is just losing his grip on reality. And it's not one nation, it's all the nations, and now it's all of mankind. This, 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 getting away from God, getting away from reality, getting away from objective truth, this has been going on more and more over the last several hundred years. It's reaching its climax now, and it's going to be, it's going to require, uh, to, to get rid of it, it's going to require a punishment like the flood in the time of Noah. At the after the flood in the time of Noah, when mankind, as scripture says, had corrupted all its ways, uh, they, the, the, the Lord God promised that there would never again be a flood of water. But uh, he did not promise that there would not be a flood of fire. And what's coming this time, because you, mankind is gone. Its leaders, its supposedly intelligent people, its universities, its adults, its worst of all, its priests and its bishops have lost their grip on reality and popes. And that we are all of us in La La Land, except small groups of Catholics which are clinging to the objective reality of the faith and who don't want to go along with a large, a huge part of the church, a huge number of Catholics drifting with the current and with the world. We have got to stand up to the world. 
We got to stand up for God. We are not here to please men, nor to please ourselves. We, we are here to please God in order to get to God's heaven. If I don't want to get to God's heaven, if I renounce God's heaven, all right, then God, I will, I will spend the rest of my life on earth that, that God will give me. He is the master of life and death. It is he who will, who will say when he's had enough. I may try to commit suicide, but if, I, uh, if it's not my time, according to God, I will fail. And many, many, many who try to commit suicide can't do it. They don't manage it because uh, it's, uh, it's a God who decides. So even when a man commits suicide, it's not he who's the master of life and death. It's God who chooses the moment when he will allow this poor young man to commit suicide. I remember in Italy, a man who put a, 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 an eye to a gun to his head, he blew out his eyes and lost his sight, but mysteriously he didn't lose his life. Therefore he was blind from then on, but he was still living. That was, all, that was the doing of Almighty God. Therefore, uh, the, this terrible disease, this magic potion of idealism, it's called, or subjectivism. Idealism because ideas are taking the precedence over reality. Subjectivism because the subject, me, is taking precedence of the object, reality, outside me. In reality, of course, I am governed by what is outside. My mind is determined by, is fixed by what is outside me. The senses tell me what's outside and this, from what the senses give me, my mind deciphers reality or understands, grasps reality. But for modern man, no, no, no. Uh, the senses may provide me with materials all the time, my five senses, but it's my mind that shapes the, the material coming in from the senses. It's my mind that says what things are. My mind says that this is a book, Good, that's true. My mind says it's a cat, completely false. It's not a cat, it's a book, and so on and so on and so on. Reality is what it is independently of my mind. Imagine that inside the church. Then the ascension is what I, I make it to be. The resurrection is what I make it to be. I can still use the same words, but if I put a completely different meaning on them, then I am changing God's religion, obviously. That's modernism. And it's not a single gash like the, the, the up front on the starboard side of the Titanic, which sank the Titanic. It's, it's something unimaginable. There's no comparison in this respect with the ship. It's some magic potion which makes steel uh, porous. Just like the reality is, is made soft and porous to my wishes and my desires, and I make, I make, I construct my own la la land. And, well, maybe I will only harm myself, but I'm certainly not submitting to the reality with which God has surrounded me, on the hope, in His hope, that I will use my free will, which He gives me, in order to ride reality in the way that He wants his reality in the way that he wants so that he can let me into his paradise and share in my bliss and increase his glory for the rest of eternity. Pius X came from peasant stock. That's why he saw through modernism. If he'd gone to one of these modern universities and if he'd listened to Descartes and if he'd listened to Kant and if he'd listened to all the smart, smart intellectuals who flood out these wretched modern universities, if he listened to them, he would never have had enough common sense still to say the religion, the Catholic religion and the Catholic Church come from God. They are what they are. I submit to them or I fall into hell. And that's how it is. That's the reality. So because he, was, because he didn't go to any university, because he went to seminaries which were still in, in the 19th century, decent seminaries, which still taught the truth, although the magic potion of liberalism was already trying to infect them. And with Vatican II, the, 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 church, the churchmen of the 19th century and then the 20th century were all the time threatened by this complete drift into la, -la land of mankind, especially here in Europe, which is given by God graces to lead the world in all kinds of ways. That's another reality. 
that Europe needs. And, and if it doesn't, it's going to be severely and specially punished because it's been given special graces for a special purpose to help all the rest of mankind. And if it refuses to do that, then it's going to pay the penalty for that. But it, Europe is not the same as the other, con other continents of the world. In God's creation, the reality is that there's variety and higher and lower all over. There are flowers which are more beautiful than others. There are plants which are taller than others and so on and so on. In God's creation to reflect the variety of his goodness, there's a tremendous inequality. And some are given graces to lead and to tell and to be superior to other human beings. That's how God chooses to arrange his creation. And if those beings, especially for instance, Europeans who are given special graces, do not use them for the purpose for which God gives them, then those Europeans will be punished. And that's what's happening today in Europe. Europe is being flooded with non-Europeans. It's losing its character. It's losing its nations. It's losing, it's losing the difference between the nations, which Almighty God uh, also comes from Almighty God. We have ahead of us a very harsh, in, in, in the near future, a very harsh lesson. Dear friends, uh, we're not many of us, imagine how, 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 there are not many of us here today, but yet it was the, the law of God that every Sunday I must go to Mass. Where are several people who've been to Mass here? Well, well, one may very well hope that they are at Mass elsewhere, but they need to be at Mass. And if they're not here nor anywhere else at Mass, they will pay. The Catholic religion is not an option. It's not a choice. It's an obligation if I want to go to heaven. If I want to go to heaven, heaven belongs to God. Heaven lays down the laws for going to heaven. These laws are objective, and I cannot, to make them easier or softer, change them, switch, start switching them around in my oozing mind. And if I, if I realize that my mind is oozing, I'd better do something to stop it oozing. Pope Pius X gave to the Church, uh, his, passion, his great encyclical on Moderns appeared in 1907, he gave to the Church a reprieve of 50 years, until 1958, uh, when Pius XII died. And then the oozing which came from all the universities, which was coming from all the universities, which was coming from all the politicians, which was coming from all of the church, from many of the churchmen, not all, but many, uh, this uh, oh, flooded, flooded the church and the church, so to speak, sang. The church cannot sing. The Catholic church cannot sing. That's why there are small pockets of resistance to this universal la-la land uh, amongst Catholics all over the world. They're not large numbers. We're not here large numbers. Today's the proof. And many a Sunday here. Dear friends, if you don't come to Mass here, you must come to Mass somewhere on Sunday. It's the law of God, it's an obligation, it's the third commandment, and it's not an option. The true religion is serious and is demanding. And I can't use my oozing mind to switch it all around so that it becomes soft and easy. That's not the real religion. And it won't lead me to the... The oozing religion with chocolate in my breast is not going to get me to heaven. Protestantism will not get me to heaven. A Protestant can get to heaven, but only by what is still Catholic in his beliefs and in his practice. But it's difficult because if he's a Protestant, he has protest in his bloodstream, which was Luther. Therefore, my dear friends, how do you protect yourself? How do you and I protect ourselves against and the oozing of our minds so that we lose grip on reality. It's very easy when everybody is doing it, it's very easy to do it as well. We are social creatures, we are very influenced by our environment. Our whole environment today is against God. What do we do? Pray the rosary. The rosary, I don't know how, I don't know why, but the rosary is the, the, the strongest and surest means of stopping the mind from oozing. I don't know why. Well, I, I know that. I'm quite sure that, because that's what Our Lady tells, 
tells us to do. She says to us, whenever she appears, and she's appearing a great deal to try and save souls, she says, pray the rosary. She doesn't say, buy an AK-47, go up to the house of Westminster and just blast everybody to pieces. That would be useless. All the media were an uproar. Oh, this crazy right winger, he's shot so many of our wonderful politicians. Useless. Tanks, rockets, submarines are less useful today than the rosary. They're less powerful in what really matters than the rosary. And dear friends, make sure that you pray the rosary. At least five mysteries every day. That will protect you considerably from the oozing of your mind in line with the rest of so many, so many poor souls today. Pray five mysteries at least, 15 mysteries if you can make it. But that's maybe demand. That the heaven, does, our lady doesn't ask for 15 mysteries. I've never, well, she just asked for the rope. She, 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 but she does ask for at least five mysteries every day. And that's because it, it keeps us, it keeps my mind in reality. My, I, if I meditate on those 15 missions of the life and of our Lord and Our Lady, which are closely interlinked all the way through the rosary, if I pre keep my mind on, if I meditate on those things while I'm praying, my fingers are praying with the beads, if I meditate on those true, great truths, that will immunize my mind against La La Land. It's, the, it's a simple means, it's a humble means, it's accessible to anybody, you don't have to be a university intellectual in order to pray the rosary. In fact, if you're a university intellectual, even a Catholic university intellectual, you will almost certainly, you're very likely to despise the rosary. That's just silly peasant stuff. That's good for the Italians, but not for we English. We are smarter than that. We've got our modern technology, and so on and so on and so on. Pride. Pride blocks out salvation, blocks out God, blocks out reality. I want to assert myself against reality. I'm going to show that I am superior to reality. Folly, absolute folly. Pius X understood it, but, and that's why the Archbishop of Lefebvre chose Pius X as the patron of the society that he was, he, he constructed in order to resist this chaos and foolishness and oozing throughout the Catholics, throughout so many Catholics and so many churchmen in the allegedly Catholic Church. My goodness me, dear friends, the Rosary, for the sake of Our Lady, for the conversion of sinners, and for the protection of my own poor brain from oozing, which it will easily do. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen.